have a very unique amplifier. This is a Gibson G60 solid state amp with a 15 inch speaker. Okay, pretty cool. The guy from work brought it to me to repair. He's owned it since he was 16 years old. He said it worked for a short period of time, fizzled out, and it's been sitting for decades. So right now, the amp is dead. So it's up to me to bring her back to life. Here we go. Well, since this Gibson came into the shop dead, I'm not going to power it up until I determine what was popping the circuit breaker. So let's just give it a thorough inspection. Let me sweep the front panel. I tried to find this amp online to get some information, schematic, etc. It does not seem to be available. I did find a schematic for the GA, I think it was like 50 and 60 on Schematic Heaven. And they have some information, but it's not exactly right, but it's close. It runs the same output transistors that this one does. Okay, so obviously we have a circus board here. I spotted this right off the bat, this old open frame relay. And they're using that to toggle, which looks like an LDR on the circuit board. And this appears to have been added. This big old crusty 200 ohm resistor. It's kind of an indication of that. There's your circus breaker. Input jacks here. Now, I found a picture of the rear of one of these and it only shows this jack, not this one. So that's part of this craziness going on. I'll see if I can sort that out later. I was down here in the filter cap area. And I made a little bit of a discovery. I believe I know what caused the amp to fail. So you see those caps, right? Big old monsters with a bridge rectifier in between them. I was in here goofing around. I found this lead laying on the other side of the chassis. And then I looked right down in between this cap and its case. And this other lead was actually lodged in there. I don't know how that happened. I don't know what somebody was doing. But somehow these little bare wire leads got inside of this amp. Hopefully they did not get over here to the final output transistors. Alright, let's flip this thing around and give it a view at a different angle. Alright, let's start on this end. There is the normal foot switch input. You can see this is identified as the model G60. Here is the new input jack. Okay, There's your circus breaker. Get a back shot here of the controls and the circuit board. These caps all look original on the board. There are some signs of maintenance, but nothing alarming. Okay, And if you look right down here, you can see the manufacturer date. And there are the MJE output transistors, which I found are identified as obsolete. I'm sure something could be substituted in. So let's uh, search for the short. Normally, when you get these amps, it's always the output transistors, and I'm hoping that's not the case. Somebody has been in here, and I can see where they engraved, it looks like EBC here, underneath these transistors. And somebody wrote PMP right there, and NPN over here, right? So somebody's been in here checking this thing out in the past. But these transistors look original. So I got my meter set on diode test. We're just going to see if we have any shorts. So see that 0.5 voltage drop? That's about normal. So that transistor looks good. All right, let's check this one over here. Get my leads in here. Finals do not appear to be shorted. Obviously, another thing we want to make sure of is that not shorted to ground. This one, obviously, the collector shares the ground. There is an insulator, but there's not an insulator on the screw. Okay? So it looks like the collectors are tied to ground. So that's no big deal. We don't have a short yet. Let's move over 
to the power supply area. <clears throat> so remember, I said that I saw that piece of wire lodged in this filter cap. Okay, so we're going to go to like 2K scale. So let's check these filter caps to ground. Okay, so we'll just grab a ground point. This lead here goes to the positive side of this cap. Okay. So if I go across the cap, I'm showing a direct short. There it is. And that's where I found that little lead. What about this guy? No, this one's okay. But we have a short over here. My guess is, is when the lead fell in there and it shorted out, it probably popped the breaker. And somebody probably sat here and hit the breaker or held it. And it finally created a short, the bridge. So let's lift this wire and see what we got then. These leads also look to have been interrupted in the past. I think somebody was possibly in here on the same troubleshooting path. All right. Remember we had a short on this cap? We don't have a short anymore. It's here. All right. Let's go back to diode check and go across the bridge. That's odd. Huh, it doesn't like the diode check. I don't think I was actually on diode check. I think I was in between ranges. Yep, and there it is. One ohm across that diode junction. <clears throat> yeah, this guy's wasted. All right, we either replace the bridge or put in a suitable substitute. I don't know if this is original either. So let me see what I have. We'll replace it and see if the amp will power up. All right, I did a little research on this bridge and it's also an obsolete part number. So I thought, well, I'm not gonna screw around trying to find one of those. So I took these diodes and made my own bridge, okay? These are 6A100 diodes, that's the part number. So they're six amp at 1000 volt PIB, which is plenty adequate for this because I think we're only around 70 volts tops, okay? So I've identified the bridge, got your negative here, positive here. Those two leads will go to the filter caps and then the AC is gonna dive in here and here and we're not gonna use the ground tab. So I'm going to remove the bridge, we're going to install this, and try to apply power to the amp. Looking at the bridge, here it's identified as AC on these two outside terminals. There's a plus sign here and a negative sign here. So it's kind of hard to screw these up. Okay, I just want to make sure that my positive lead ends up on the positive of the bridge. You sure don't want to reverse voltage go into those output transistors. So I think these leads are just kind of sitting on top of these terminals. Yep. I really don't like how short the positive and negative wires are. I may have to extend those. So you can see how ratty those connections look. These have been lifted in the past for sure. Okay, remember our AC are these two guys. All right, got the bridge out. You can see that old heat sink compound. We're not gonna have to worry about that with a new bridge. So before I mount our new little diode bridge, we're gonna clean that compound off of the chassis. All right, looks like only one of the wires are actually gonna make it to the new terminal strip. I'm gonna have to extend this guy, and then the blue and red wires, they're ratty anyway. I need to put some fresh wiring on there so that they go where they need to. All right, the new diode bridge is in place. I haven't heat shrinked this wire yet, but nothing's touching, everything looks good. I extended these leads, and they didn't need to be so short. 
So I'm going to make sure there's nothing in here contaminating things and we'll bring it up on the Bariac. So I made sure that all the contamination was out of here, little bits of solder, anything that could short out my new power supply. We'll just make sure now that there's no shorts. Here's the game plan for the initial power up. I put a little 10 ohm resistor across the speaker lead. Just give it somewhat of a load. I don't plan to crank up the output. Right now I'm just checking the power supply. So I have my meter set up across the positive side filter cap. Okay, so I'm just going to bump the voltage and we want to see that meter go in the positive direction. Okay, if I do this and it goes the opposite way, then obviously the bridge isn't wired right. So here we go. Okay, like I said, that breaker was popped when it came in. Okay, how about we turn it on? <laughs> Here we go. Yep. Good sign. Positive voltage, right? Now, we're going to flip our meter to the other filter cap. And that should be our negative voltage. Because those output transistors run push-pull. We want to see positive and negative voltage. So if either is missing, it'll eat your output transistors. Here's a negative. Yep. All right. Good sign. So at this point, I'm pretty confident that this amp is going to power up. So now I'm going to get it off this assembly, flip it on its side so I can look for smoke a little bit easier, and we'll bring it up to full voltage. So I've got the amp in the position that I need to kind of monitor things. My meter has that 10 ohm resistor. That was on the speaker lead. The meter is now looking at the speaker leads to see if we have any DC offset. Because if you see a lot of DC voltage sitting there, that'll melt your speaker, right? So I ensured that the voltage was okay to the final output transistors. It is. So what the issue is, is the amp is just not fully powered, so it's not going to balance. So what we're going to do now, I have a sacrificial speaker hooked up. I'm going to plug her in and see what happens. Full power. There she is. You see that speaker go boom boom when it fired up? That's that voltage you were seeing and then when it equalizes out, she's fine. Got it. Whoa. All right, so we've got some super dirty controls. I'm going to address those. We try to see if we can get a tone through it. Now here we go. I've got my leader audio generator hooked up. I just want to make sure that the amp is actually amplifying. Okay, I'm not going to leave it on long. Oh yeah. Still got some dirty controls, but the good thing is the amp is attempting to work. You can see our power lights burned out, so I'm going to replace that. I'm going to clean these controls again, try to get her quieted down. We'll go from there. All right, so remember initially when I was buzzing out these transistors and found that one lead on each transistor was actually hooked to chassis? And I thought, well, that's probably okay. And as we know, the amp did just power up with no smoke, right? Well, I got thinking about this, and I was like, you know, somebody had these pulled because they etched EBC on the chassis. I thought, you know, I better look at the schematic. And there it is right there. There's those output transistors. Do you see the collectors going to chassis? I don't. I see them going to the plus and negative 35 volt lines. So that really concerned me. I thought, oh no. So my guess is, is somebody put this metal hardware in there where it should have been insulated hardware. Now I've got the insulated hardware installed. We're going to check these transistors once again to chassis ground. Make sure that we're open. And now we are. So to tell you the truth, I have no idea how this amp powered up safely. I think I just got lucky. So I'm going to test it again. Alright, I got a guitar hooked up to it. 
Hear that? I mean, she's playing, but it's, there's a lot of static. If I put my hand on the amp, see there? Perhaps it has some type of a uh, grounding issue. It is not using a grounded power cord, okay? It's just a two-prong cord, so maybe the chassis could use a ground. That's my guess. First thing I'm going to do, though, is make sure that nothing else, like a power supply, is connected to that chassis, and then we'll experiment with a ground. All right, I connected a temporary ground to the chassis just to see if that buzz matic is gone, and it is. So next step, we're going to put on a grounded power cord. Here's the plan. I've got the new AC cord ready to hook up, so you can see it's a grounded type. The circuit breaker has to go, okay? These things, they get old, they get unreliable, and do not protect your amp. So I'm going to replace that with the chassis mount fuse holder. I'm also going to remove these death caps, and we're going to make the switching on the power switch on, off, on, like it shows originally, but it's not going to reverse the line cord. So I'm going to strip this stuff out, we'll rewire it, and it should be better than it's ever been. I've got the AC system rewired, so here is our three conductor cord, ground, neutral lens here, goes up and feeds accessory socket, plus one side of the power transformer. The hot comes in, hits fuse holder, and then it jumps over to the outlet. I didn't want that to be switched with the main fuse. Then we go through the fuse, up to the power switch, and hit the other side of the primary. Simplified it and got rid of the death caps. All right, so the Gibson G60 lives again, right? Came in the shop dead, got it operating, fixed the power supply, added a power cord, and now she's pretty clean and quiet. So for this video, I'm going to take a mission complete. Later on, I'll go through the other things that the amp needs. We'll fix that and do a demo, but that'll be in part two. We'll see you then. All right, so I lied to you guys. There's not going to be a part two. I talked to the owner, and he says, I don't care about the reverb. I don't care about the tremolo. I just want to play it again. So we're playing the amp. So this will finalize the repair. for one of these. <laughs> Ow! Oh! Oh! Cut me right to the bone. So wait a minute. So, what's your comment about the solid state amps now? They react well. Transistors do react fast. Yeah. Yeah. Like kind of bright and punchy. They're, yeah, they're punchy. They're very punchy. There's no sag. Yeah. Which, I mean, it's a good thing for some people, I guess. Working.